I mean, let's face it, he's going to say yes because we're all a bit fake when we fancy somebody, right? We're just going to go with it in the hope that they like us and then we'll allow the real person to come out when it feels a bit safer that they're not going to run away and abandon us. I mean, after all, I presented to like bounties at one point. Bounties. Ugh. No, no thank you, ma'am. Heart stopper. Need I say more? I'm going to look at the first two episodes on this video today. So I'm sitting here as a gay psychiatrist with an interest in LGBT health, reminiscing about what it was like for me as a teenager coming to terms with life. And now that I'm 32, hopefully seeing that things have moved on for the better, maybe. Ready? Let's crack on. Well, if it isn't Charlie Spring, have a new year. Hi, sir. Come to join the ranks of... Hamlet oh, this is the teacher that everyone on Twitter has been thirsting after, isn't it? Join this seating plan. Ah, yes, you're over there. Next to Nicholas Nelson. He's in year 11, so only one year older than you. One of the rugby boys, too, I think. I'm sure you'll get along swimmingly. Or you can just sit in silence for the rest of the year. It really doesn't affect me in any way whatsoever. <laughs> I was at a rugby lad type of school, though I didn't play rugby or was any sense of a lad. But what he's really implying here is somebody that at best will have nothing in common with and at worst is such a lad that he might be a horrible, vile homophobe. Gays can like rugby too, sometimes. Oh, bless. Oh, that's cute. Hi. Hi. I know it's corny. But it's really sweet. I like it. There's so much crap going on in the world. Let's have something that's a bit happy and nice and just let us get lost in it for a bit. Butterflies in your stomach is another wonderful example of the mind and the body being one, being intricately connected with each other. You perceive someone as being attractive. You want that sense of connection. Let's face it, you might get a bit turned on. That's the not so medical word for sexual arousal and an increase in your libido. And this therefore involves parts of the brain like the striatum that's involved in reward, the anterior cingulate that's involved in motivation, the prefrontal cortex involved in decision making, and the brainstem that can be involved in hormone release and ultimately in the fight and flight reaction that manifests physically around the rest of the body. Because that's what it is. It's the same physiological reaction as the fight and flight response. Your heart starts racing a bit more. You feel a bit queasy, otherwise known as butterflies in your stomach. You might feel a bit sweaty, even a bit tremory sometimes. The difference is that your brain interprets these symptoms differently. Rather than necessarily interpreting them as a threat, it interprets it as something motivating or in some people's case motivating and scary all at the same time been there have i killed the romance with science yet you're so cute <laughs> okay see you later then yeah still don't tell anyone about this oh um. It's such a confusing and horrible phase. I can remember my own phase of secrecy. You take a step forward, for example, in understanding yourself, but you're so terrified of being outed. The one thing that maybe you have some control over and that fear is really real, but it's incredibly difficult if the person that you're exploring your own identity with is already out because in a sense it forces them into secrecy and potentially lying to people in a coercive way when they may not want to. You're finding your own way, sometimes in a clumsy way, but you've also got to be mindful that that doesn't transition into selfishness essentially towards the other person that is kind of holding your hand metaphorically and physically through this journey. Hey. What? Uh, just, hi. Why are you talking to me? I don't even know who you are. All right, mate. That fear of being outed is so incredibly real, and I think every queer person goes through it at some point. I can't speak for anybody else. I can only speak from my own experiences where that fear was almost at the forefront of my mind with everything that I did. I just wasn't ready. I just wasn't willing to accept that part of myself just yet. I would fight it and I would find myself trying to avoid people and any sort of associations with the LGBTQ community because 
I didn't want people to then think that I was part of that community because I wasn't ready for it yet. The difficult thing though is usually that fear means people end up overcompensating and in this case, being a bit of a dick. I just keep forgetting how you're allowed to miss her. Okay, fine. Obviously it's better that she's at an all-girls school now. You know Mr. Reed was still refusing to call her L. Yeah, Mr. Reed's a massive transphobe. It's still weird though. There used to be four of us and now there's only three. Like, four is a group. Three is just a trio. Trans young people that are attending a single sex school are not legally required to move to a different school or college, whatever they may be at, after they transition. So, for example, a trans female in this case could still continue to attend an all-boys school if that's what she wanted to do. However, under the Equality Act of 2010, if they want to, they can move to a single sex school that matches their gender. The only way that a school can say no to that is if by denying them access they are, and I quote, this is a legal term, that denying access is a proportionate means of achieving a legitimate aim. And that's a very specific legal concept, i.e. they've got to justify why it would be beneficial and within the law to deny somebody access. It's quite a while since you've hidden in here at lunch. I'm not hiding. Then what are you doing? Eating lunch. Oh, right. So everything's okay? There's no bullies I need to sort out again. No, everything's fine. It's still definitely a safe place for him though, isn't it? Actually, there is kind of someone. A bully? I've, I've got a boyfriend. Oh, well, congratulations. He's able to be out to a teacher. To me, that's so powerful. If we think of outdated legislation like Section 28 that was in the UK from the late 80s to the early 2000s that banned any discussion around LGBT issues or specifically the promotion of homosexuality in schools, something that we're seeing reintroduced in states like Florida as well, and something that the UK regularly discusses, again, specifically with regards to trans people, but fortunately there's nothing actually in the legislation about it, but unfortunately similar attitudes are still there today to have a safe adult in school to confide in like this is unbelievably powerful and besides i and i think a lot of you watching this grew up surrounded by the promotion of heterosexuality yet still turned out gay it's okay i don't even know if i don't think he even thinks we're boyfriends anyway he ignores me sometimes he doesn't even like people seeing us talk to each other in the corridors. He pretends like he doesn't know who I am. But then when it's just us two, he's fine. Well, have you talked to him about how that makes you feel? Good question. No. Maybe you should talk to him then. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Break up with him? Don't know. What, do you want to break up with him? I don't know. I can't solve your problems for you, Charlie. What about your friends? Have you talked to them about it? They wouldn't get it. Well, why not? Because they're not gay. It's a bit like therapy, isn't it? There's a safe attachment that's there, and good therapy is about helping to try and give you clarity on what you're feeling, why you might be feeling that way, how those feelings might be impacting the way that you think and the way that you act. Um, it's not about problem solving. It's about trying to give you clarity to then support you in being able to find your own solutions to things. If a therapist is actually problem solving for you and doing the work for you, think again. So um, I had something I wanted to ask you. Charlie, I wanted to tell you I'm gay too. Oh, it's and a little fantasy in his head. Do you want to go out with me? I want to be with you forever. Do you want to join the rugby team? Bubble burst. I mean, let's face it, he's going to say yes because we're all a bit fake when we fancy somebody, right? We're just going to go with it in the hope that they like us and then we'll allow the real person to come out when it feels a bit safer that they're not going to run away and abandon us. I mean, after all, I presented to like bounties at one point. Bounties. Ugh. No. No, thank you, ma'am. Charlie Spring, though, is he in like year eight? No, he's in year ten. He's like well skinny, though. Can he even play? Like, I'm sure he's a nice guy, but we actually want to be decent. Does he even like sports? Everyone knows he's gay. <laughs> <laughs> Stereotypes are real. Well, they're not real, but everybody still believes that stereotypes actually have a factual basis. And, you know, do gay people like sport? 
is certainly one that gets thrown around a lot. I could recommend the LGBT in sport podcast by the BBC. It's a wonderful example of lots of really talented queer sports people and their journeys in coming out in various different sports. I, for one, even like football. Very hashtag mask for mask. You're clearly just scared of getting caught. Projection. Why would I be scared of getting caught? Everyone in school already knows I'm gay. In a way, I really feel for both of them, actually. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't feel for that fella. Charlie is out at an age and a stage in his life. I mean, I'm... I'm admire the bravery of anybody that's out at that age. I wasn't brave enough. I was still very much in the denial phase about being gay and trying to convince myself that I was straight and the internalised homophobia was real. I could have easily been like this clumsy dickhead that's still confused about his sexuality and discovering who he is. But being a bit clumsy is not the same as being overtly mean and using the very person that's actually helping you to move through this really uh, confusing and stressful journey to help you come to terms with who you are. <clears throat> Charlie, I know you like me. Stop it! Bloody hell. Charlie, look, I like you, but I'm figuring stuff out. Literally, what more do you want from me? My sympathy's gone out the window now. <clears throat> he told you to stop. And there's the knight in shining armour. Yeah, my sympathy's gone out the window now. That was short-lived, because, you know, basically sexual assault, right? Yet another example of why issues around consent and relationships need to be taught in school. It's not really brilliant, like, you sort of pathway, honestly. Things haven't really moved on with those, and that's what people say when I was at school. I bet he was looking at us in the changing room. Charlie, he's looking at us. Oh, what a weirdo. He's such a loser. Real. On this basis, I presume things haven't really changed, but certainly when I was at school, the words gay and queer were slurs that were used to bully people. Um, another reason that I feel so strongly about reclaiming those words. And it definitely contributed to the internalised homophobia that I and I think many other gay people and queer people in general experience that makes it so much harder to come to terms with who you actually are. I mean, nobody was out at my school and it was an all boys school. So I know that I was far from the only person that was going through this at the time. So I, um, heard about you coming out last time. Um, yeah, I guess. I was really brave. Well, it wasn't really my... It sort of just got found out. That fear of being outed, especially when you're at a stage where you're not even sure if you're gay, let alone comfortable with it yourself, accepting of it yourself, and then you're forced to deal with other people's perception of that at a time and in a manner that you didn't want. Deciding when to come out and who to come out to in what way and over what period of time is about one of the only things that you have any control over. And when that's taken away from you, the powerlessness is just, it's horrible. I can't think of another word for it. I talk about this a bit more on a reaction video I did to Love, Simon with the guys with Cinema Therapy. I'll put a link to it somewhere floating around my head, but it's it's really good and it was really fun and really, really interesting. So do check it out after this video. Watch till the end first. The moment of truth. Is someone crushing on you or are they just nice and straight? I have more the issue is the other way around in the sense of when you've got all these straight blokes that think just because a gay person is nice to them that they must fancy them. Or worse, the entitled straights that think because they're a man, every gay person must automatically fancy them. I mean, come on, you're wearing a Man United top and drinking carling. I mean, honey, you're absolutely safe. Nobody's interested, trust me. Go on, double tap it. Double tap it, go on, double tap it. Ugh, they're going to make us wait for this, aren't they? This is so much more interesting than Ross and Rachel. That was off of Friends. Friends is a like, show off of the olden days if you're under 20 years old and have never heard of it. Oh, he's straight, Charlie. Like, you only need to glance him to see that he's a massive heterosexual. Isaac, back me up on this. Ginormous heterosexual. Exactly. Masculine guys can be gay. Yes, they can. Mask gays exist. Mask versus femme is such a sort of outdated concept. I could pass for somebody who was quite mask and therefore perceived as straight automatically without being overtly femme. And occasionally 
particularly when I was a late teenager and early in my 20s, sometimes a little bit of the camp would come out. And if someone commented on it, I'd feel like I'd failed because I'd let the mask slip because to be gay was one thing, but to be gay and femme felt way too much. Something that I thought would make me much more judged um, and encounter a lot more barriers than I probably would actually have encountered, which is nonsense, but all part of the journey, I guess. Mr. Ajayi. Charlie Spring. Hi, the question. Well, I am officially a beacon of learning, so fire away. How do I stop liking someone, specifically a straight guy? Ah, uh, a question for the ages. I thought you had a boyfriend. No, no, he was horrible. This is someone else. Wow, being a teenager is terrible. You know, when I was a teenager and had a crush on a straight boy, I just repressed it and suffered. In psychodynamic terms, repression is when you've got this unpleasant or unwanted mental process going on where it's a memory or a thought or an impulse or an emotion and you actively try and prevent this from entering into your conscious awareness. It's common and frankly as a long-term defense mechanism don't work. Repression only drives the thought and the emotion down, it doesn't actually get rid of it and it doesn't help you have an outlet for it, process it and understand it. You can only repress so much. Charlie seems like a lovely boy. When did you meet him? Uh, the Queen herself. A couple of months ago. Uh, he's in my form. He's very different to your other friends, isn't he? You seem much more yourself around him. Mums always know. Do I? You do. Mums always know. And is there a safer person to come out to than Olivia Coleman, the Queen herself? Clearly the matriarch over this lovely little queer story that we're seeing unfold in front of us. Uh, must be a big moment for him. It's a big step forward from thought to action. <clears throat> okay, see you Monday. And maybe that's all we could do at this at this stage. I don't think he's straight. <laughs> yeah, neither do I. It's kind of like the same principle as graded exposure that we use for phobias and anxiety disorders. Um, you take a step forward, the emotions come, you've got to sit with those emotions, feel them, realise that actually the bad thing that you think is going to happen is probably not actually going to happen. And then you can take another step forward and another step forward in a way that is gradual at your pace, but is always constantly moving forward. Coming out is a gradual process and frankly, it's a lifelong process. I still feel like I have to come out to different people every single day of my life at the moment. Am I gay? I think we've all been there. I've typed that in. Question is what answer does he want? Does he want reassurances that he's not gay? Is he ready to know the answer? Brings back a lot of memories, brings back all the feels that does. If only it was as simple as Google being able to tell you who exactly you are. I loved it. I am so happy for people and young queer people, that they have a show like this. I'm just trying to think, what did I have? What was my heart stopper? <laughs> Maxi and Skins. Not exactly the same thing. <laughs> Let me know what you thought though in the comments below, and I look forward to watching the rest of the series with you over a couple more videos. Thanks a lot, bye.